Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome to this week's edition of Farm Business Options. I'm Barry Caslin, Chagas Energy and Rural Development Specialist. And for those of you who are familiar with the Farm Business Options series, it started last uh, September and uh, it's continued on quite, quite a bit. It was really a COVID exercise and uh, we've continued on to, uh, to now and we're going until the end of May. So we're in the last couple of webinars uh, of this series. So uh, the whole idea of it is to give people who are trying to diversify or thinking of diversifying some new ideas and um, hearing from champions or other people who have diversified in the past and maybe learning from those experiences as well. Uh, today we're talking about the whole area of diversification in Germany and many European farmers are really struggling to make a living, uh, you know, in difficult economic context of falling uh, food prices, uh, you know, key agricultural commodities. Uh, you know, there's a lot of market volatility out there as well. And for many, a way to stabilize or increase their income is to branch out into other non-agricultural activities and using their farm facilities at the same time. We see lots of examples around Europe of tourist accommodation, production of renewable energies, the sale of handcrafts, and there's a wide range of diversified activities out there that can be implemented on the farm itself. The situation is very contrasted right across Europe, and it depends on uh, the Department of Agriculture in those various countries and how much support that they give towards di diversification in those countries. Some, uh, with some member states, there's you see a lot of it happening, and in other member states across the EU, there's no, uh, it's non-existent in terms of diversification. But today we're going to be talking about diversification in Germany, in a very particular part of Germany called the Black Forest region. My guest today is Hannah Green. Uh, Hannah has, hello Hannah, you're, you're, you're very welcome. Hello Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, great to have you here today, great to see you again. Um, we've, many of our advisors have met you in the past and uh, they've, they've seen the work that you do in the great work that you do in the Black Forest region of, uh, of Germany. Uh, what's the weather like in Germany today? Um, it's cloudy. It doesn't snow right now. <laughs> it's getting warmer. Spring's Did coming. Did you have snow recently? Last week. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's, uh, it, it has been fairly cold there up until now. Yeah. yeah. Well, just Hannah, by way of introducing you, uh, I suppose since 1996, you worked as an official agricultural consultant and home economics teacher at the district office in Breisgau, uh, Hoch Schwarzwald in Germany. You're, she's been responsible for a discussion group in her area, organizing and running meetings to turn teams about agritourism. Uh, Hannah has been engaged in general counseling, marketing concepts, calculation of profitability of holiday accommodation on regional farms. And now we're going to explore with Hannah the opportunities and the challenges of farm diversification in the Rhine Valley and the Black Forest regions. So Hannah, I believe you have a presentation to share with us. You're going to go through that first of all, to give us a, an idea of the work that you're doing in, in your area, and also ideas of diversification that have happened in your region as well. So I'm going to hand over to you, Hannah, and we'll talk to you and we'll take questions. If anybody has questions you want to put to Hannah, you can put them through the chat function there and we'll put them to Hannah afterwards. Thanks very much. Well, thank you, Barry, for the invitation and uh, uh, that the, the opportunity today to, in, to take you all on the journey, on the vi virtual journey to the Black Forest. Um, I would like to give you an overview of farm diversification here in my district of the Breisgau Hochschwarzwald. And I thought um, I'd do a little bit of personal introduction. Um, I, I'm gonna give you a short overview of our district so you know where we are located at. Um, the reasons why our families here on the farms are in search of new diversification, agricultural in my work environment, um, vineries in the Rhine Valley and farms in the Black Forest. Our district is um, um, holding a lot of opportunities. Examples of diversification, which is probably the most interesting part uh, for you all. And the key to success. Yeah, like Barry said already, I'm engaged in seminars. I work a lot with uh, the farm 
lives. Um, we do seminars, I do counseling, uh, um, we do education and workshops uh, here with young um, pupils uh, in our um, school kitchen. And we also do a lot of consumer education from farm to fork is our main theme. Yeah, where we're located at, from Ireland here to the Black Forest, we, we're located in the southern part of Germany on the border to France and Switzerland. And our region here from the Rhine Valley where the wine grows to the Feldberg, our highest uh, mountain here in, in the area of Baden-Württemberg is uh, 1,493 meters. The main cultivations in the Rhine Valley, there are the crops as, such as corn or maize seeds, soybeans, and the viniculture the the grapes we also have a lot of special crops in the rhine valley such as vegetables salads asparagus right now and strawberries and uh, the area is big for fruit production such as apples pears cherries walnuts and wine and up in in the mountains in the black forest we do have permanent grassland. We do have the dairy farms here. We have the beef cattle, goats and sheep. And of course, also forest economy. Um, 50,000 hectares of agricultural area um, is located here in our district, which has a total of 137,833 hectares. There is 2,900 farms with an average size of 40 hectares, which is not very big. Um, and that's why a lot of families are looking for diversification. What's our main responsibilities in the Department of Agriculture? We do counseling and training and adult educations for farmers and their family. Like I said, I'm working mainly with the farmer's wives. We're trying to maintain and securing an environmentally sound, sustainable agriculture. We are working in security of family incomes on farms and the production and marketing of high quality regional food. And of course, uh, a main part is the implementation of the programs of the state of Baden-Württemberg and the European Union, um, the direct payments, which are probably, um, um, yeah, you work with too. So I brought you some pictures from the Rhine Valley here. You can see the grape yards in the back here, um, the hills from the Black Forest and, uh, a lot of farms are in the rural area, like outside the villages. And very typical um, here in the in the villages, uh, in the wine area, those houses built close together and with an archway to to the inside um, of their um, uh, courtyard. A lot of um, Apartments here um, are um, for the wine lovers, which are different than um, in the Black Forest, where the target group is mainly families. In the Black Forest, here you can see the TTC and the Feldberg. There's still snow. Last week it was still snowing. And um, the typical Black Forest farms, everything is under one roof. In the back, there, there are the stables. In the front, the people are living and up under the roofs, um, the, the food, the, the hay is stored. And uh, there is mainly a little house uh, for the elderly. And uh, also there is a chapel. Maybe some of you know the historical water wheels. And here you can see a view from the long winter we have due to climate change things are changing here too but last year we had lots of snow and you probably know the famous 
cuckoo clock or the black forest cake. Yeah, facts of uh, in search of new diversification. Um, the farm here is home for generations. A lot of farms are very old uh, from 1700. The purchasing power in the district is high. People are, um, they like to buy regional foods. They like to uh, do their holidays up here. Farmers create a cultural landscape for the tourists in the area and locals. And that's an important part. Um, we have a lot of very steep um, hills and um, they have to be tended to. There is a trend towards regionality. In the area of ag agricultural products, there are there is declining price rates still. The profits decrease. And a lot of times the family income is not enough. And also um, because um, yeah, buildings have changed. Um, like uh, I showed you the picture of the stable in the big black forest farm a lot of stables have been built beside the big farmhouse and therefore there are uh, vacant uh, farm buildings and here you can see this is an old farm from 1600 and something and uh, the way uh, it looked um, before restoring so farm families are looking for solutions um, for um, their inherited uh, land and buildings. Diversification is an additional source of income. And there are three main fields I'm working in. It's the biggest field is agritourism here, um, holiday apartments and guest rooms. We also have some special offers, sleeping in as sleeping in the hay bed or in a wine barrel or in a shepherd's cart, or maybe you put your bed in the cornfield. There is also the big part of direct farm marketing, such as shops and booth. Um, a big increase we have in vending machines for milk and other products. The artisanal dairy. Um, we have 11 cheese um, farms here in our districts. We also have wine stores and taverns, small taverns. And um, the part of farm gastronomy, such as cafes or catering. Here you can see a modern farm. This farm has burned down. So you can see the, the barn here in the back um, with a milking um, robot, robot um, in the main building. There's four, four holiday apartments. The guests like the surroundings of the woods and the green grass, the setting in the backyards here, um, a comfortable uh, chair, to, to get the suntan, or here you can see the fruit trees and orchards, um, a campground on the farm. Yeah. Agritourism, holiday apartments, or guest rooms. Um, the main target group here are families, nature lovers, active people as hikers, skiers, bikers. In the wine area, it's mainly wine lovers and gourmets. The average overnight stays here in our area is about seven nights in a holiday apartment. In a guest room, it's about three nights. And to give you an idea, um, the average occupancy days is about 200, our best. Um, farms they reach about 300 days per year um, of renting out um, their holiday apartments due to corona 
everything is closed still right now and for some families um it's it's very difficult at the moment this is the farm here with a separate uh farm sta the stable and uh um a holiday uh an apartment house an apartment building built on the farmhouse here you get an idea of what the bedroom and the living room and the kitchen looks like um it's a uh, very high quality and uh the farmers have put in a lot of money but uh, they can reach a good price they also have a, a wellness uh, area with the sauna and uh, and rest uh, areas here I brought you some pictures of some special offers like a tree house here or uh, sleeping in a wine barrel right in the middle of the the vineyards or a, a shepherd's cart for example um those are like i said the special offers they need um to have uh, separate uh, sanitary rooms in the main buildings for the direct marketing um Here is a little egg and noodle hut um, where um, it's self-serve. People can just go in and get their eggs and they have a little cash there. And it's a, it's a trust and carry uh, type of um, selling. Um, probably in Ireland you have uh, those vending machines. This is the milk vending machine as well um we do have um a lot of machines that uh, you can get your eggs or your vegetables potatoes um cheese products or or meat products some come with coolers some without and yeah the regional stores uh with their uh fruit displays for example um a lot of uh farmers wives bake their own bread. Um, and here is a is a farm here in the back. Uh, they have an event room in the front. They have their shop. Uh, this is an addition, an artisanal dairy. And they also make wee cosmetics out of out of the wee. Here you can see uh, the cheese uh, pot, the ripening room, and part of their um, shop farm gastronomy here you can see also difficult um area for farming a lot of um this is an organic farm it's built in 1860 40, 1641 um and in the main building they have the gastron gastronomic um, area here um, the family the young family four kids a chapel which uh, was very important for the farmers um, to be built an attraction for the guests too that uh, come to the um, restaurant They have uh, Limousin and Hinterwälder, that's a special breed in the Black Forest, very small and light cows um, for the steep uh, meadows here. And also they breed their own pigs. And in the summer, um, they get 250 goslings. And starting November, um, yeah, you can get the four course, four course roasted goose menu. Uh, which is here uh, a very special uh, treat for their customers. Yeah, the farmer's wife, she's getting up at three o'clock in the morning to bake her own bread uh, to be sold to the customers and um, to be added uh, to their menus. Something very typical here in Germany is a schnitzel um, from pork. 
um, from their own pork or their own beef. They also sell um, meat packages um, to customers and they bake their own cake out of their own apples. So this organic farm um, is very um, focused on their own and regional products. They're also a member of the Slow Food um, Group Association. Her husband is also trained as a cook, so um, it's a very close, uh, um, yeah, here um, from farm to fork is lived daily. Yeah, what is the key to success? Which is the new way? It needs a good idea. And here's the question, what are your or our unique selling propositions? It needs the personality to start a business. Do we like hosting guests on our farm? Do we like serving customers in our farm shop? It also needs know-how. What are your, our qualifications in the service area? It's not only producing food, but uh, yeah, customers uh, do need a lot of tending and um, we have to be willing uh, to give that to our customers. Do we have special skills? Yeah, it also needs readiness for change. And it takes the whole family. Are all family members willing to step forward? Because it's an extra, it's an, a lot of extra work. What are our family preconditions? Are there small children? or elderly on the farm that need care and need extra time? What are our operational preconditions? How is our time management? It takes about uh, one man hour per occupied day in a holiday apartment. So if you have like uh, 200 days, it's an extra 200 working hours. How is our office organization? Are we firm with the internet or social media? And of course, a key to success is the infrastructure. 70% of our district here is living um, off the tourism. The Black Forest is here in, in Baden-Württemberg, the biggest destination for holidays. And is the location scenic, quiet, busy, or historic? Are there stores, <clears throat> pubs, and attractions nearby? Is there a public transport to be used? Like here um, in our area, uh, all the guests do get uh, um, a special card. It's called the Konus card and you can use um, trains, uh, buses, um, also cable cars in, in the cities for free with that card. Yeah, the existing of our farm operations. How is the condition of the farm buildings? Are there investment requirements? Because you can only spend your money once. You can invest in your farm or you can invest uh, in new farm holiday apartments. Is your farm safe, neat and tidy? Or is it an operational farm? Uh, where there's a lot of uh, tractor traffic um, and maybe the cow smell, the manure smell. It's not so attractive uh, to guests sometimes. Which uh, legal frameworks do you have to meet? Can we build on our property? That is a, a big um, 
challenge here right now. We do have a lot of farm apartments and there is restrictions in building um, in the rural area. Here the restrictions are 15 beds and three apartments and a lot of farms have more than three apartments, but uh, that was um, allowed years ago. How is it with water and sewage? In the rural areas, a lot of times they have their own wells and their own sewage systems. And how is it with tax matters? The key to success is also a realistic budget plan the cost and financial plan, does it exist? Um, it does need uh, personal work contributions. And how many liabilities do I have at the moment? Is it possible um, to increase those liabilities? Yeah, to my conclusions, additional family income can be generated with diversification. There is a lot of input to be make a res to be to make a representable profit, sorry. <laughs> and the whole family is engaged in the new farm business. So it takes everybody. Yeah. Thank you. And I hope good luck with your new enterprise. Anna, thank you very much for that. That was a brilliant uh, presentation and a great overview of what uh, you're doing yourself in uh, Baden-Württemberg and in that region of Baden-Württemberg as well. Uh, if you want to stop sharing your screen there now, yep. a moment. Thanks very much. So, uh, Hannah, this question's come in and lots of compliments come in as well in terms of uh, your lovely region uh, where you live. And lots of people would like to be taking their holidays in that region in the near future uh, once restrictions are removed across Europe. So, um, Hannah, uh, so if any of you have questions that you want to put to Hannah, please put them in the Q&A box there and uh, we'll put them directly to Hannah as well. Um, maybe just to reiterate as well that you do live in Baden-Württemberg. That's one of the regions or Bundesländer in Germany. Yeah. Um, and there are 16 different Bundesländer in Germany, as far as I'm aware, Hannah. And is the support very different in Baden-Württemberg, where you live, compared to Bavaria or Niedersachsen or Sachsen-Anhalt, for example? Is the support very different in the different regions? Um, a lot of it is uh, European um, programs. Yeah. And uh, our county, Baden-Württemberg, sometimes gives a top-up. And uh, there, um, in, in the area of diversification, it's 25% of uh, the costs for buildings and also um, like the furniture in the apartments, um, which is a, it's a good contribution. Maximum it's 200,000 euros. And it's a de minimis, I don't know, yeah. is that an English word as well? De minimis uh, <laughs> program. So 200,000 uh, euros maximum um, as a support for a family. And top up is um, a lot of times the family contributes um, some of the work like they can do uh, the tiling or they can do the framing and uh, um, mainly the farms have their own woods too so a big contribution is um, the wood uh, for the building for the construction okay and would the support be very different because do, do german farmers feel the need to diversify at the moment not just in your area but all around because i remember reading recently that something like over 30% over of German farmers have diversified mm -hmm. in some way. Uh, is there a feeling that people have to diversify to stay in a rural area? Um, I guess it depends a lot um, on the um, farms, on, on the uh, structure of the landscape. Like I was saying, we do have a lot of very small farms and their diversification is 
sometimes one third, sometimes even more. Like we have one farm, it's 70% income out of agri agritourism. Mm -hmm. And to, to keep people in the area, um, they have to have uh, a good income. And where um, you have um, a lot of uh, land available, uh, it's probably easier uh, to live just from the farm. But uh, the income, the prices decrease still. Uh, a big theme is uh, milk price, probably in Ireland as well. Yeah. We do have a local um, dairy in Freiburg where hmm, the milk price, I'm not sure, I think it's 35 cent per kilogram mm -hmm. for conventional. We do have a lot of uh, organic um, farmers here now that uh, mm -hmm. uh, they try to get a better price out of that type of farming. But um, diversification is also sometimes um, um, giving uh, synergies to, uh, to the income. Like you produce meat, you sell the meat directly in meat packages, you can get a better price for that. Mm -hmm. A few questions coming in here, Hannah, I'll put them directly to you. What do you find are the benefits of working with farmers' wives? That's from Joan. The benefits, yeah. I think they're great clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're usually the motor in the family. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And they are the ones who, who run uh, the new enterprise too. And they feel like they are um, not just the farmer's wives, but uh, they are able to, to contribute to the income, to the family income. I find too, a lot of young women, they have a very good training now in other jobs. But when they marry a farmer uh, and once they have their own small children, they find their work space on the farm. Okay. And you mentioned you, you uh, run a lot of courses for those women in your area. Could you give us an idea or a flavor of the types of courses you run or the types of information or training that they're looking for? Mm -hmm. Well, um, a lot of it is marketing. Um, internet, um, how to, I find um, the marketing concept, it starts with a concept, uh, not just, just going on the internet. You have to, um, with that new enterprise, you have to have an overview where you want to, um, and, and the goal where you, what you want to reach. And um, so marketing concepts, uh, that's a big issue. Price um, finding is a big issue. How to find a good price for what I have. Uh, a lot of farmers and farmers' wives are very, um, like they have something very wonderful, um, but uh, they, uh, they rent it out for a low price. So we try to encourage them, you have something good, you can get uh, a good price for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope I answered that. <laughs> yeah, and is there any other training that you provide? You, you do stuff on finance as well for calculating the profitability of the, um, of the project, calculating bed nights. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you do marketing courses with them as well? Yeah. But we also do some very practical home economic courses, just like uh, uh, I, I'm planning right now uh, an online seminar for cleaning in Corona times. What you have to, uh, uh, yeah, how, how to, to work that, where you have to disinfect and how to uh, go about uh, yeah, your materials and so on. Just the basic home economics. <laughs> yeah, so that, that could be bread making, artisan food. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we do that too. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we do, for example, um, we did a seminar on uh, foods and wine. How does that go together? Um, how you can uh, present something, uh, very practical seminars in 
yeah, the the women like that because it's very, uh, it meets their um, needs, what they need. Yeah. yeah. And how do you identify their needs? Do you do a needs analysis survey? Do you ask them uh, what they need, or is there mm -hmm. do you, is there some? How do you connect with them to to know what the needs are? Um, yeah, we we do um, survey. We do. Um, I do have um, an address. Um, how do I say that? Uh, um, an address list. Uh, yeah. We do mailings uh, yeah. with information, and uh, um, our seminars are usually run in the winter time when it's it's not so busy. In the summertime, it's very busy with guests usually, <laughs> and all the other stuff. Tending the garden, like you have seen on the pictures, there's lots of flowers, and uh, to keep uh, a farm neat and tidy, you have to put a lot of work in. Um, yeah, so we need we we use that the information and um, a lot of times um, it's like a discussion group. The it's the same uh, clients that come. A lot of young um, as the 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 elder women hand it down to to their uh, sister uh, to their um, in laws. Yeah, uh, kind of related to that question from Mary here, is succession and inheritance an issue? Are the older generation happy to pass the farm over earlier to the next generation? Um, is It's an issue that can hold back development, certainly here in Ireland. Um, so that's a question from Mary there, I suppose, uh, passing mm -hmm. on the farm. When does it have to happen? Is there obligations to do it? Uh, or does, is there pension restrictions for not mm -hmm. doing it? Well, it is a big issue because uh, a farm here in the Black Forest is inherited. The, the young ones don't buy it from the elderly. Um, there used to be a restriction. You have to, in, in order to get your pension, uh, you have to hand over the farm. Uh, last year or the year before, uh, they have changed it, but it's still very common uh, that uh, when people are 65, um, that's usually the pension age. Now they have extended it. Uh, uh, when they're, they have reached their pension age, they pass on the farm. Here in the Black Forest, they used to have a lot of children. So the youngest one inherited the farm. Where I come from, the oldest inherited the farm. So, and uh, on the farms, a lot of families are glad that they have a young um, fellow or a girl <laughs> um, that keeps on with the tradition of farming. Yep, very good. A question here, uh, uh, Hannah, from Thomas. Do the farmers work together in co-ops or companies? Um, a lot of times they do, <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, we we try to say it's not competition. It's uh, it's something um, you uh, work for a whole region, not just only your own farm. So they do work together. There are um, tourist um, associations. They can join. There is uh, in Freiburg the Landesarbeitsgemeinschaft. That's a um, that's a association throughout Baden-Württemberg, which is also financed, co-financed by the Ministry of Agriculture. And um, yeah, so they do work together. But uh, at the end, uh, your profit is your own profit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, a question here as well, do you think that local regional population has an influence on the ability of farms to diversify? That question was from Kian. Do, do, does the local population have an influence on the ability of farms to diversify? And I suppose that refers to the fact that do, do German people have loyalty to purchase locally? Do, mm -hmm. does, does the local population like to buy maybe in farm shops uh, from maybe a local farmer that sets up a farm shop? 
Um, I think here in the area that's that's very strong that uh, the uh, that they buy local. In in the Rhine Valley, um, it had a long tradition. Whatever you had left over on your own produce, uh, you you put in front of your house and people bought it. And in Freiburg, there is a great big farmers market, which is well known. Um, and uh, people are appreciating local foods. And they are willing uh, to pay a higher price for that as well. Okay. Here, um, the population uh, in Freiburg, we do have a lot of people who have a very good income. And I find that uh, funny too, that people from the Kaiserstuhl, from our wine region, come to the Black Forest to, to spend their holidays up here. It's a short drive, but it's totally different in the landscape. Yeah, and you mentioned the unique selling point in your presentation. I think it's a very important point that everybody has to identify yeah. their own unique selling point. And, you know, in Ireland, I know, I know you've been to Ireland as well, Hannah, in the past. So I'm sure you see plenty of unique selling points uh, that farmers could be, I suppose, benefit, benefiting from. <laughs> uh, you know, and maybe would you like to comment on that, maybe your own experience of Ireland, because you've been here a number of times and you, I know you like coming here to visit on your holidays. Would you maybe comment on the unique selling points that you've identified that should be explored or exploited? Um, I find... There is a lot of products uh, that you can be very proud of. Uh, when we were at the ELBA in Limerick, uh, we discovered a, a cheese store and I found that very, very unique. Um, the artisan cheese uh, factory. Um, there is a lot of products I'm sure you can be, like I said, you can be proud of and just put it in, in a good frame. And uh, uh, a big thing here in Germany right now is the vending machines just uh, in front of the farms, which uh, take um, um, little to tend, but uh, it makes, um, you, you have to present your products. Yeah. If you can't find the products, uh, uh, people won't buy them. <laughs> and in, ca in, in terms of uh, agricultural um, holidays, um, yeah, I've been to the Wild Atlantic Way and uh, there is unique places and um, I'm sure uh, people are willing to spend money for a good offer. Um, you mentioned in your presentation about the uh, card in the area, the red card, that's the uh, individual. If you stay in, in accommodation, you can use the red card and that allows mm -hmm. you to use different facilities in the Black Forest region. Would you explain to us how that card works and how the various uh, service providers get paid for this red card usage of people mm -hmm. who stay in accommodation? Okay, there is there's two kind of cards. There is the Konus card, which um, our guests have to pay uh, a tax for overnight stay. Here in in the TTC area, this tax ranges around two euros per night, and with the Konus card, they can use um, buses and trains um, free of charge. And the red card, uh, that's um, um, installed by our regional tourist uh, uh, association, Hochschwarzwald Tourismus Gemeinschaft. And with that card, um, people can um, use uh, different facilities free of entrance fee. And that card is paid by, by the farmers. They pay, I think, five euros per night um to to offer this card per adult mm -hmm. for the kids it's less um and um, you can use museums and you can use uh, different pools and uh, you can use for example the boats on the ttc for a boat ride free of charge 
Yeah, and, fantastic. and people don't really need to even think um, about what will you do each day because there's so many different activities and so many different, um, um, uh, you know, things to do uh, with that Connors with that Connors card. A question here from uh, Michael. Michael said he's uh, he's visited your area in the past and he's used the Connors card. Is there an opportunity to visit this area to visit the farms via an organised program or a farm trip? Um, not that I know of. Some farms offer their own, uh, um, yeah, special weeks or um, that they do a little bit of a program uh, for the guests. But a lot of times those programs, they're included in, uh, um, in a regular stay as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, a question there in relation to the, um, is there a website for the area that anybody that wanted to see the area or maybe to go and experience it, is there a good website that people can go to maybe to see farmhouse accommodation in your area to get an experience of what's on offer? Uh, I'm going to probably put down some addresses in the chat. Okay. Um, I suppose one thing that uh, you could also put this in your presentation afterwards because uh, okay. Hannah's presentation will go on the website afterwards. So you can maybe add it to your presentation and we'll upload that yeah. along with this presentation, Hannah, as well. So that's another way for you to, to uh, see it, a uh, viewer, as well. Um, a question can, here. Sorry, oh, one, sorry. One, uh, yeah. yeah, I can put also the internet addresses from the farms I have introduced. Maybe you want to take a closer look. Yeah. Because actually it's coming from a couple of view viewers here today, it would be possible to arrange a physical visit to the area for educational purposes as well as recreational. So I think, um, I think a lot of people who are thinking about maybe tourism here in Ireland, it could be a good idea to visit an area like yours to see what's on offer and maybe learn from those experiences and maybe bring it back home as well. You know? uh, question here from Joan, uh, is the training restricted to farm families or is it community-based, Hannah, as well? Um, our offers. Um, mm. We do uh, invite guests, but it's mainly for farmers and farmers' wives. Because okay. uh, our regular tourist um, associations, they, they do training as well. Okay. Um, a question here about, you mentioned artisan dairy in your presentation. Could you explain our, what artisanal dairy is and what, uh, what, what uh, goes on on those farms? Um, well, they're, they're mainly producing cheese and yogurt and uh, cream cheese in, in, a, in a small amount. So uh, that's what's meant with that. Uh, the farm I have introduced, they're getting the milk from uh, uh, their neighbors. The, they have uh, highland cattle on their own farm, but uh, no milking cows anymore. It used to be, they had a small stable, 11 milking cows, and it was just too much work. So he said, uh, the neighbor's going to produce the milk for them, and uh, he's making the cheese and the products. And, and I suppose the vending machine will be part of that as well. That's a, mm -hmm. a good example of uh, yeah. artisan uh, food production. Um, do you mentioned in your talk there, are family members willing to step forward? You know, this really is, is very important. Labor requirement. I think a lot of people underestimate the labor requirement with a farm diversification. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that people underestimate the labor requirement? Uh, you know, how much time they're going to have to dedicate to a diversification and that's not just in Germany it's in every country that people might realize that the hours that have to be put in uh, in terms of meeting guests and uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, getting preparations underway marketing um, bookings all of that kind of stuff well like I said it's one working hour uh, per uh, day for the for the guests for their stay i'm not sure how much it is in direct marketing it's even more and um, the part of uh, um, cafes or restaurants or party uh, service we have that too that's um uh, well we usually say you have to be aware that's work uh, on the weekends that's work at night um, a lot of young families, for example, with a 
the holiday stays in in the main season um they uh say you have to have at least five days overnight stay in a row not just short-term stays yes, yes they try to extend uh the stays and that works pretty good and okay. that um, the guests can come uh, they arrive saturdays and they stay till the next saturday so they have the big change uh in in the apartments in one day and they have to have help then that's another problem to find good uh, um uh people who help out with the cleaning mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think the whole labor area on diversification is something that everybody should mm -hmm. be cognizant of um before you start out you also mentioned that you host groups of customers in supermarkets um can you tell us why it's important to explain to customers where their meat comes from for example um <laughs> you have to start with how to uh to fry a steak uh, a lot of knowledge is missing in in that part of uh how uh, to to cook um meals to prepare meals uh we do have a lot of fast food here too we have a lot of convenient food and convenience foods and uh therefore um yeah it's a big thing for us uh, we start with how to peel and cut an onion mm. okay. <laughs> with the consumers so and I for the for the young pupils it's so important uh to to f learn more about um how produce from the farm um yeah uh, how much work it takes and how much it needs more appreciation yeah so you're explaining production systems you're showing photos of animals of, on the farm that kind of stuff mm. you're, you're teaching so, consumers how to prepare and cook food as well well um i'm not alone here <laughs> i have yeah. a whole team yeah. that i work with and uh my uh, my one fellow uh she's organizing uh farm visits with consumers which are really uh well asked for mm -hmm. just to show them like uh, they went mm -hmm. on a on an animal um on a suckling cow farm for example or big thing is eggs right now um egg production vegetable production it's so important um uh, to to explain and show people um how our produce is grown and tended and do you do this for school tours as well do you host school tours to farms to show kids you know where their food is coming from um there are uh special trained farmers who uh um who who are in a group how do you explain this lernort bauernhof it's called um i can put the the address for that uh uh the internet for that program it's a program and the farmers who invite school classes on their farms um they get a little bit of reimbursement it's not something you can make a whole big profit out of but it's uh uh it's yeah um There's probably a big disconnect there in terms of children yeah. re realizing where their food is coming from so it's it's a, right. it's a education so you have a you have something that you maybe you could put in your on on the presentation afterwards that we got load that would explain that to people um a question's coming in there is your service in germany is it paid for or is it publicly funded um here in baden württemberg since we are a part of the ministry of agriculture it's public funded the people um they do make their contributions for our seminars but it's somewhere between 5 and 25 euros um per seminar it's not very much okay and um, a question there from and what is the biggest reason for the failure in diversification projects in germany for the failure well in in uh the area of farm uh, holidays i have not 
experience in those 24 years that one had failed there mm -hmm. um it's a lot personal reasons i think um yeah when when family um families change we do have divorce in farm families yeah. increasing because of uh, a lot of work a lot of um um social problems i think um in the area of direct marketing uh we have experienced uh um, the change away either the shops are getting bigger and more professional or they change the shops into soft serve shops just like that little hut or or the vending machines yeah, when we visited you in germany i think it was three years ago at this stage mm -hmm. um Hannah, we, we noticed that many of the farms have their own farm shop or and a lot of the local people will shop in their local uh, farm shop as well mm -hmm. and some of them open maybe a couple of days a week or very very specific times so they can manage their labor around that and the people get to know mm -hmm. that they can buy the eggs between certain hours mm -hmm. they don't need to be manning the shop for eight hours a day for seven days a week or five days a week so it's a, a very specific hours i think it's a it's a good example of you know the local people getting to realize when, it, when the opening times are and what, what they can get during, during, during those hours as well. Are farmers supported in setting up these shops or do they mainly have to fund that themselves? Um, there is a diversification program as well with those 25%. In the area, um, like also for um, cafes on farms, there is that program valid um shops vending machines if you need uh, um like for example the cheese f um production you can uh, get help for that as well through that program it covers it covers the whole area of diversification okay. Um, a question there, um, somebody was drawn the attention to the map that you put up earlier on, that you're very nearby to Switzerland. So the question is, in nearby Switzerland, the price of food is much higher than in Germany. Do people from Switzerland travel to your region to buy cheaper food? Or do German farmers sell their beef or milk to Switzerland and get higher prices? Um, well, because... Uh, Switzerland is not part of the European market. Uh, we do have taxes. But we do have here in the Black Forest a lot of Swiss. Um, the target group is uh, Swiss as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, they come for holidays. They come uh, and eat well. They um, do shop uh, in small amounts. Okay. And are there many examples of rural tourism discussion groups in Germany? you know you mentioned the discussion groups that you have would, it, would that be quite common for because we have discussion groups here in ireland around dairy and beef discussion groups and forestry discussion groups and um, we don't tend to have them around uh, you know rural tourism or diversification would that be quite common in, in germany um i can only speak for baden-württemberg yeah. uh, we do have discussion groups and it was um um yeah, uh, our ministry um, 20 years ago uh, said it's very important. It was implemented by the ministry at that time. Uh, we do also have, um, um, how do I say that, um, groups that uh, have to pay a membrance fee, member fee, yep. um, and then they get the service through... Um, through uh, that group, uh, Beratungsdienste. I don't know the English word for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, uh, advisory service. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, Hannah, we have run out of time. You got lots of questions there, a lot of interest in what you were saying here today. So thank you very, very much for your time. We will be putting your presentation up on the Chagas website under chagas.ie forward slash farm business options. Um, so I want to thank you very, very much, Hannah, for being here today for your presentation. And we look forward to meeting you again at the next opportunity for uh, 
IALB and youth first members of advisory services meeting across Europe. So Hannah, thank you very much. Uh, next, on next week's Farm Business Options, I'll be speaking about the whole area of farm technology and innovation. It's the second last of, uh, that will be in this series of uh, Farm Business Options uh, webinars. So I want to thank you, our viewers, for watching here today. Thank you, Hannah, and goodbye to you all until next week. Take care. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>